This video is brought to you by Beckett, HVAC pump solutions you can trust. Learn more at beckettus.com forward slash industrial. On a previous show, I had talked about heat pump performance in cold weather and how on very basic, especially older heat pumps, up to basic modern heat pumps, they perform very poorly when it gets cold outside. Somebody in the comments, I don't remember who it was because I'm going off my memory here, which is right 50% of the time, had mentioned my particular heat pump, which is a Bosch variable speed heat pump, kind of wanting to compare between the old ones and a variable speed heat pump. So I was looking through the internet. I didn't feel like going up in my attic, I guess, to get the actual manual. I was looking for the specs. It took a while. I found everything but what I needed, but I found the specs for the Bosch heat pump. So I'm going to show you guys what they are, and I'll tell you podcast guys what I'm looking at here, and we'll compare the performance of a variable speed heat pump like the Bosch with an older single stage heat pump. So what we're looking at on this PDF is heating performance data from the Bosch IDS 2.0. BOVA unit, which is the outdoor heat pump. This is the BOVA 36, which is what I have, plus the BVA 36 for heating. I think that's the indoor coil, but it works the same for making this point. We have a three ton unit matched up with a three ton coil. Along the top of this chart, you see outdoor dry bulb temperature. It ranges from 72 on the left all the way to negative four. What we really want to find out is what kind of performance do we get at negative four and reading over the manual it looks like the bosch compressor will shut down at negative four to protect itself it's one of the protections that it offers because at negative four you're in real danger of going so low in the pressure category that you're going to end up damaging the compressor because the pressure goes down temperature goes down might be slugging the compressor. There's all sorts of hazards right there. So you'll switch to electric heat, which is like we talked about last time, resistance heat isn't very good as far as energy efficiency, but also the good thing about it is it's simple and it doesn't depend on the outdoor temperature. It's just heating up the air as it passes across it. There's no refrigerant flowing. It's just resistance heat. So that's very, very nice in that regard. It can be a lifesaver in certain instances. So let's hone in on the left side of the chart first. On the left side of the chart it has CFM, so you can choose from 1,020, 1,150, 1,350 is what we can see on the screen now. We're going to go to the very top, just to keep it simple, at 1,020. And we see different temperatures, indoor dry bulb, ranging from 60 to 80. We're going to go with 70 because that's right in the middle. That's where usually people keep their temperature in the wintertime. So at 70, we'll see next to that is a TC. That is total capacity. So total capacity at 70. 72 degrees outside, 70 degrees inside. It says 31.7, 31,700 is how I've deciphered it after looking through this chart. It seems to be that is 31,700. It is writing 31.7. So at 72, like we talked about in the previous video, you're not doing a whole lot of heating at 72. So let's go over to 47. 47 was mentioned in the previous manual we talked about on the last podcast. So at 47, at 70 degrees, 31.2. So almost the exact same as our 31.7 total capacity we had at 72. All right, that's a good sign. It's not trailing off already. So let's slide to the right a little bit. If we go down to 17, our total capacity is 27.5. So that's a vast improvement over the single stage unit that doesn't have the variable speed compressor that the Bosch has. It's sustained a relatively high capacity, even at 17 degrees. And even as we go all the way over to negative four degrees, we are still at 20.7. Remember that I believe it was at zero. The single stage heat pump I was looking at, which was a Goodman was at 9,000 BTUs. It was one quarter of the capacity that it would start out as if we're talking about a nominal capacity of 36,000 BTUs. So that's substantially improved over a single stage heat pump. Now, what exactly does that mean? If I'm just an average Joe Schmo technician, which is what I really was, I would think, hey, this is going to be a lot more heating before you get to that emergency heat. Meaning we're not going to have to have the emergency heat running as often. So we're going to save a lot of money. That's one thing I would consider. I would also consider that we will be warmer than we would when the emergency heat's not running. 
because if it is 9,000 BTUs, like the single stage unit, we still have the same CFM. So I say 1,000 CFM is blowing across 9,000 available BTUs. That air is going to be a lot cooler than if it's blowing across 21,000 BTUs. It's going to make the world a difference. We all have heard customers that have heat pumps for the first time. We had this a very common event where I live. I'm in coastal North Carolina. We're right on the beach. We would have northern transfers that would come from up north. They'd retire and come down to the beach. We have several very nice beaches. We're like, we're not Florida caliber, but we're pretty good. We have Wrightsville Beach. We have the Crystal Coast. We have very nice beaches down here. Shout out to Homer, Homer Blackburn. Our northern friends come down here after having fossil fuel burning appliances that are 130, 140 degree supply temperatures. They come down here and just imagine them on a cold night feeling that very, very lukewarm. Lukewarm is almost too warm for how it feels. It feels like a cold draft is what it feels like. And this is the reason why. When you get to those cold temperatures, the machine is trying to take the available heat outside, which, believe it or not, is plentiful. It's just not designed for taking the available heat at zero as well as it can take it from 17 or 47 keeping in mind that there's a ton of heat outside even when it's below zero because the temperature scale goes way down below zero. So there's heat in the air. But like we talked about last time, machines are designed for a certain condition. If you design for 47 and 17, then zero and minus 20, you're not going to be able to design for that. You're not going to have a range that's effective that large. Now, that being said, look at our variable speed unit. It's our best shot at achieving comfort in all ranges. So the Bosch looks like you are good all the way down below zero and almost have two tons of heating at your disposal. So I thought that was a great comment, way to bring that up, and I'm glad we could discuss it here on the show because it's something that we need to know. If we are, if you're selling variable speed, I mean, that's a good point about it. You can mention that to your customers, say, hey, this is, you know, this Zach on the television told me that variable speed was better for heating, so... You should buy this. It'll be $12,000. And you can send me like a chunk of that, and I'll spend it on uh, power tools. Thank you. I need a planer, so I would like a, a, a benchtop planer, please. That's how you reward me. So I hope that answered some questions, guys, especially guys that are new to heat pumps and want to learn more about their operating capabilities. Variable speed looks like it beats single speed. Probably could have guessed that, but seeing it in writing definitely sheds a lot of light on it. 